Hey, Tim. Hey, I just wanted to see if this worked. Natalia, I have no questions. It was awesome, <laughs> as always. Thank you, Thank you team. <laughs> you, you left the audience speechless. <laughs> yes, you were riveting. Or, or maybe horrified because <laughs> people who have YouTube code bases right now, like, oh my God, yeah, I'm I not know. ready. I'm one of those. <laughs> you, <laughs> you are, I know. Uh, luckily, I've done a bunch of few three now, and it kind of, it's cool. It works. Nice. Yeah, for us, it's more or less complicated because we also have huge amount of dependencies like bootstrap views so we would need to wait yes. until they are updated and how does it work with because i know you do a bunch with graphql and apollo and stuff how does that work oh actually view apollo is ready for apollo client 3 and we are still using apollo client 2.6 they are 2.6 right now yeah. it's funny how both apollo client and view are following the same numbers in versions 2.6 2.6 but and not with UX. They are a bit crazy. No, 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 no. <laughs> UX, Vue CLI, and Vue Router. For me, it's like so unintuitive because Vue CLI is already on four. Exactly. Like, mm. It works for both Vue 2 and Vue 3. So yeah, we will be migrating to Vue Apollo version 4. And I can't wait for composables there, but we'll see how it goes. So I think there are 17 people here. Does anyone have a question? Yeah, feel free to post in the chat. I feel like I'm not supposed to show my camera. I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Stay. Stay, it's we have fun. fun. <laughs> yes. So Natalia, I'll ask you some fun questions since nobody has technical questions for you yet. Um, how have you been um, spending your time during COVID? Oh God, you know, it's like, when you so finally first thing is like i want to say hi to my manager who is on parental leave right now oh, nice. definitely adding to my entertainment because i'm managing a team <laughs> right now not only an engineer but i'm an engineer and manager so like level of entertainment was growing this for this also like preparing some <laughs> workshops and talks like adding more to entertainment so when i have a, like some hours to watch netflix I'm definitely the happiest person. So really, there's not much downtime right now. <laughs> nope. No, for me, it's the opposite. I've worked double, basically. Yeah. Work doesn't stop. It actually got more because we had to manage a whole bunch of trying not to fire people. And if you work from home, you just you don't really stop. <laughs> so that's me anyway. Yeah. You're always on, right? That's yeah. the thing. Exactly. Yeah, for us. For us, it was, uh, we actually forced oh, people to stop and we even have days, family and friends days, which are enforced holidays for GitLab. Otherwise, people are burning out really hard during the lockdown. Yeah, we had to, we had to let go some of the freelancers, which is terrible because mm. we had these amazing people to help us out and we couldn't keep them and we also have clients like easyjet you know the airplane guys and they they don't really exist anymore so we had to let go like three quarters of one whole office which is so oh, bad wow that's a lot yeah it's that's not good lot. but yeah that that's just real life hitting you right mm -hmm. so on a more positive note <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> I oh, oh look it seems like somebody has a question for you yep uh, starting a migration to Vue 3 from where one should start with. So at GitLab, we had a pre-migration task. <laughs> yeah, it's like speaking about if we should migrate to Vue 3, I would say yes. So where should we start? At first, we were preparing the code base for migration, even within Vue 2. First of all, we checked for all the occurrences of event buses, because we had a lot of event bus. I'm not proud of this, but we had many. And we replaced them with external solution. We replaced them with MIPT. Uh, second, we were checking every single case of slots because we have an old code base, right? So we had multiple occurrences of slot scope or slot attribute, which is deprecated but working on Vue 2.6, but won't work on Vue 3. 
So we were changing the syntax to the new one, replacing them with this slot directive and replacing all the content with template with this slot, even for default slots. So we don't need to refactor them when it's ready. <laughs> Aren't you afraid of the migration as well? I am. Honestly, <laughs> it's like when you have huge code base, an old one with so many dependencies and when you know that honestly ecosystem is not updated for view 3 right now actually and... this really worried me because you talk about um the event bus and slots and it's basic we use it so much oh boy <laughs> Oh, there's an actual question again. Yeah. Yeah, for Nuxt users, it's quite different because we need to, as I said, ecosystem is still not ready. If we speak about core libraries like ViewRotor, Vuex, or something like this, they are more or less updated and we are ready for this, they have tools. But if we're speaking about external solutions like Nuxt, and Nuxt is still not core, right? If we speak about component libraries, for example, if you use Beautify, if you use Bootstrap View, they are still not up to date with View 3. So yes, migration is scary in these terms because you can't predict when all the libraries will be ready for you. So let's check. Let's see, have how another time, one. Yeah. yeah. How much time would you estimate it will take to migrate? So first of all, uh, we're speaking about when we start or how much it will take to actually migrate. If we speak about when we're going to start, I think it's not decided, but the main idea is to wait some time, maybe until the first minor release, like 3.1. And for us, uh, the main breaking point, I think, is Bootstrap View. So when it's released, we will start. And how much time it will take? Again, it depends on your code base. For example, GitLab has multiple applications, like, and by multiple, I mean 500. So when our dependencies are ready, we can start migration and do it iteratively, one by one, application by application, because most of them are independent. How much time it will take from the first application till the last? It's really hard to predict because it depends on how many deliverables we have. Migration is a good thing, but it's not priority number one. We will still need to deliver updates to GitLab. And this means it can take up to half of a year to migrate everything, maybe even to one year to migrate everything. Because again, code base is huge. We have legacy code that is like six years old. We still have jQuery sometimes in <laughs> dark places for our code base. So. <laughs> Have you automated any parts of your migrations? Yes, we have code modes. We are not ready to show them right now. And also Vue CLI includes a code mode as well. So if your project is run on Vue CLI, there, there is an automated code mode. It works. It replaces a good amount of things. For example, it works with V models, with slots. It can't replace event buses for you. But if you try to run you update on UCLI project, you will see that how, how it changes. Um, update event bus and slot you just use just uh, not any more steps right now. You can check this, but there will be view 2.7 as a step for migration and view 2.7 will come with a deprecation warnings. So you will see on your code base what parts are outdated, what you should upgrade and this way you will have more smooth migration to view 3.x. Yep, that was exactly the question. Do we have backward compatibility available? That's why we will have 2.7 with LTS support as kind of compatibility build. How many people are involved in this migration? Uh, for us, the whole co the whole development developer space will be involved in the migration because every certain team will need to do the migration. How would you divide the work amongst the devs? Yeah, so basically we will have a few leads defining the next steps. 
And what we do at GitLab, for example, we create epics with issues. Then every single team, so this is like large scale epics, and every single team will define their own steps. And uh, my current role is not in management. My current role is staff engineer, which is senior plus one, <laughs> basically. But my current manager is parental leave, so I'm working as a manager right now. Use of render functions in view three. For example, if you, so first of all, if you, for some reason, migrating from React and you use JSX, you will still need a render function, right? So this is the first idea. Second, if you, if you want to work with a renderless component, you still can use render function as well. Uh, how different is new create element signature? Uh, right now we use render with view.h. So for example, if you want to go with a renderless component, signature is completely the same. It will be just rendering the default slot. Uh, if you want to go with view.h, it's slightly different, not that much. It's already documented in the API, by the way. Cool. <laughs> nice. Well, I know that you um, had to leave, Natalia. So we want to thank yeah. you so much for your time and taking the time to answer all of these questions. And thank you so much for always delivering an amazing talk. <laughs> um, so thank you for your time.